everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'm back to continue working on Lost in Paradise from Graphic 45. This is one of the newest collections that they've released, and I've already got a base album tutorial out there that builds the 8.5 by 10.5 base album. There's a second video that adds the flaps and pockets that are specific to this album, and now we're focused on laying in all the designer papers uh, from the Lost in Paradise collection. So I do have um, one of the videos done for the paper collection and it covers the um, installation of the papers for page one and page two. And now we're gonna start focusing on page three. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and get started. I'm gonna try to keep my voice up, although I've been really struggling um, this morning with my allergies, so bear with me. I'm gonna set my book aside because this page is a little different um, from what I normally do. I normally attach my large um, pieces or flaps directly to the album itself, right along the edge. In this case, I have what's called a floating flap and the flap is actually attached directly to the mat, not to the um, base album page or the pocket page, but to the mat. And the way I accomplish that is I cut a slit in the paper, the same length as the flap, and then I slide my hinge behind it and adhere it to this. So that, instead of having my flap attached to the very edge, it'll be attached centered on this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and I'll give you an estimate on where to put that. But my recommendation would be to visually lay your flap down and then draw a pencil line and that's where you're gonna to wanna to cut your slit. Um, but if you reproduce this album, just as my measurements indicate in the, if you click the description, you'll see the um, cut list for this. I have placed this slit right here, three quarters of an inch away from the edge. So I came in three quarters of an inch and I created a slit and it is the same length as this flap, which is seven inches. And it might be a smidge larger to make it easy to get the hinge in. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down now that I've talked through it. And you know what? <clears throat> I need to put tape on this side. So normally the tape goes on the outside when you lay it down, but when you do a pocket like this, you need to put it on the inside. And I think I had laid my tape down before I decided how it was going to attach to the album. So I'm just gonna run a quick strip of tape here. <clears throat> Feed it through that um, slit and, um, and get it tacked down. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the other features before I put the whole thing in the book. Don't take the backing off until you feed it through, otherwise it's gonna get stuck on you. Okay, and then I like to, once I push it through, let's slide these out of the way. I like to kind of lay it down and make sure that it's going to operate and that it's not getting hung up on the paper in any way before I take the backing off, because once the backing is off, you're really committed. Okay, and it looks fine. So I'm flipping it over, I'm gonna remove the tape. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> there's a little bulk here because there's a magnet. And I'm just going to lay that down. That's it. So this is in now. And as you can see, it operates just fine. It's not getting hung up on the paper anywhere. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and add the designer pieces. So I am loving this pattern. This is the cover or the signature page from the collection. And for this page, I'm using the 8x8. Um, and this is also the same thing I'm going to use in the cover of the album. <clears throat> but I'll be using the 12 by 12 instead of the 8 by 8. So one of my rules of thumb is for the internal flaps and pockets, um, because they're smaller pieces than the main album, which in this case is 8.5 by 10.5, but sometimes 8 by 8, I use um, the larger 12 by 12 scale patterns on the base page like for example this green would be from the 12 by 12 uh, patterns and solids and then I use the smaller scale or the 8 by 8 on my flaps which are some something smaller than the base of the page right um, and I just find that the scale works better 
when I do that. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. It's not, and I say rule of thumb, it's a guideline um, that doesn't always work out that way because I sometimes run out of um, a particular size. And so I make it work with um, whatever patterns are left. But it's something to think about when you're planning your album. All right, so this is going to go on the inside. <clears throat> and you know what? Yeah, this is right. Okay, I was going to say, I forgot to check which side I wanted the hinge on in the album, but I did pull it out in the right orientation. <clears throat> Let me get some glue on, get the tape off that magnet. <clears throat> Sorry about my allergies, guys. I was uh, doing some maintenance in the yard yesterday, and so I'm full of whatever that allergen is. <laughs> And I'm going to add a little glue to my tape so that I don't stick to it before I'm ready to center. Oh, shoot. I hate it when that happens. Luckily, it dries clear, but it's still annoying. Okay. turn it sideways so I can see both edges. <clears throat> That's better. That's more centered. <clears throat> there we go. Much better. All right, so that's the end. This is the, turns out the flip side of this is gonna go in here. <clears throat> And I just realized, I don't think I trimmed a piece for the, the very large flap. So we'll have to take a break and find a piece of paper that matches there. I'm like, wait, I'm short a piece of paper. <laughs> but we'll get it installed in the book first. And just so you know, yes, it is hard to cover this up with glue because I like the pattern. You're not the only one. I, I have the same trouble. Um, but you can't have the same pattern on every page. That would be kind of dull. All right, so I'm gonna turn this sideways as usual. So I can see these edges. And this isn't really directional, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay it down in the orientation of the other side. <clears throat> So here we go. So when you open this page, it'll open this way and then it'll also open this way. So now we need to find a piece of paper to cover that. So I'm gonna pause this for a minute and search through my scraps and see if I can't find something. Okay, I was having a little trouble finding a piece of paper large enough for this flap. Um, now that I've gone through most of the book, I've used a, a great deal of the paper. So I decided um, I found these three pieces and I like the way they look together. So I'm going to do a piecing here. And one of the reasons I was finding uh, a little bit of a challenge getting this covered is um, it is seven by nine. So my eight by eights don't fit. I would have had to do some piecing anyway. So since I had to do some piecing, I thought, well, I'd rather be a little more creative and not just put an eight by eight with one strip on the side. So I, I came up with this design. So I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, laying this down. I love this dark green. It's really beautiful. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to get some glue on the back of that magnet as well, and then get this laid down. And then, like I tell you, um, if you have trouble getting it all to fit, what you want to do is try to remember to trim your larger pieces and leave your strip alone. It's the harder piece to trim. Now I'm looking for orientation, make sure I'm going the right direction. And this is, 
this is it. Okay, a little bit of glue there. I'm just turning it around so I can see it. <clears throat> and that's it. And I want a, a larger piece on this side because that's where the magnet is. I could have removed it and put it someplace else, but that's where it is for now, so. I just worked around it. <clears throat> okay, and this is the piece that's gonna go on this side, and then this this uh, red strip is planned to go in the middle. And I was looking, and I think my strip might not be quite wide enough, so I may actually place this and then trim out another piece here. Yeah, probably. It needs to be just a smidge wider, so I will come up with another scrap. Yep, and that one's gonna be wide enough. Perfect, and I'll trim it out. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember which side. Let's see which one looks better with the strip. This one or this one. I tend toward this. I just like the larger pattern. It has a lot less pink in it. So that's the direction I'm going to go. It's actually not pink. It's more like a coral. I'm gonna dig through my scraps a little bit, so bear with me and see if I can find one that's already perfect. The perfect size. Because I have lots of strips. Don't throw your strips away. <laughs> Never throw your strips away. And even if you don't use them in the album, I use them in cards. That's the other um, good way to use them <clears throat> or good purpose for them. Sorry for reaching across, but well I don't see what I need so I'm, I am going to have to trim something down so if I have to do it which one do I want this one or this one and I like this because this is too close to this pattern put my strips back trim off. It looks like two eighths of an inch. So I'm going to shorten it first. Seven and seven eighths. It's the right height. This is seven and seven eighths. And let's see. I'm going to try an eighth of an inch first. My dog just came in. Hello, Nala. little more. Okay, this is where it starts to get tough because the paper gets too <laughs> hard to hold. Well, it fits, but it fits too tight. So I want a little bit of a black border between both. <clears throat> so we're gonna go here, almost there. Very close, one more sliver. So I really like the way this looks, but as you can see, <laughs> it can be quite fussy. All right, so I am happy with that. That looks pretty darn good. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up and get it laid down.
And again, I just like to knock this white edge off. I, I don't like to distress inside the page, at least not on graphic because it, it already has sort of this antique look anyway. So um, it's really up to you. Some people like to distress into the paper quite a bit. I'm, I like to go kind of light. So I do want to point out that the powder puff is now available in our shop. We have uh, four browns, uh, two grays. Um, one, the darker one is I think closer to a midnight. That's what they call it. I haven't actually opened the package, so I don't know. Um, I haven't seen it on paper yet. Um, but anyways, we do carry these in our shop now. And I love them. I wouldn't use any other ink. They, uh, they last a long time and they're just not as messy as some of the other alcohol inks. They can be used for stamping as well. I use them exclusively for distressing, but you can they're called chalk inks and you can use them uh, for stamping as well if you are a scrapper stamper. All right, there we go. So I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. A lot of times I like to piece because if the panel's too big, it just gets a little bit boring. So there's the inside. We'll go back over. So here's our front, which opens this way and then it opens again this way. So this is what you wind up with. Okay, and see how that flows nicely. You rarely will look at it this way, but I still like the fact that it flows. Okay, now this whole thing, I'm gonna bring my book back into view. This whole page, this whole panel is gonna get laid down now onto page three. <clears throat> and let me double check my orientation. Yeah, that's up, down. So I'm going to get some glue on here, get my tape off, and get this laid down. And that is it for page three. <clears throat> Remember to add some uh, glue to your tape right now because you will need a little time to maneuver this paper into place. So make sure you put some glue on your tape. Otherwise, the tape will grab ahead of everything else and make it difficult to get your paper centered. And because it's not a flat piece of paper, which is what we normally put in, I mean, there's some bulk to it because of the flaps, you'll need that little extra time for placement. check my orientation without dropping it and it is upside down right side up right side up okay it goes this way okay try not to pull from that section that wasn't very wise is page three. I'm just burnishing with my hand a little bit. Make sure everything's grabbing. Remember right behind here you've got that hinge. You want to push that into place. And that looks good. So that's the end of page three. <clears throat> I like it. I like it. Okay now we're on to page four and five. Four and five are mirror images of each other. It's kind of chaos right now, but it's going to look like this, actually. I think the way I did it was the two green on the inside and the two florals on the outside like this. So there's a do two doors, and then inside there's three pockets. So that's the design for four and five. And I'm actually going to deconstruct this. It's all held together with, um, I want to say smoke and mirrors, but <laughs> with my... Um, Paper clips. I wanted to call them safety pens. I don't know what, what's going on with my language. I couldn't find the word. But I'm going to take it apart, and then we're going to build it up from the inside out. Okay. So, set these 
these things aside and yeah I was just checking to see if I had inked everything and it looks like I have which will save some time okay so now this is now this is essentially naked so I'm gonna start by laying these pieces in. So these pockets, I did not tack down at the very top. Um, so once we get our designer paper in, we're gonna come back and make sure that they're tacked completely down. And I think I'm gonna start in the bottom and go up. <clears throat> so I'm just moving it closer to me so I can see the, the edge better. I like this page. Um, it's a nice wide pocket, so this will actually hold lots of photo mats. And I started um, matting and car, uh, ephemera pieces to put into the pockets, but I will come back and finish that part of the process in the last video. Right now, I just want to get all my main pages laid in. This is pretty, 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 um, although it's quite bold. So um, I was, I had a little trouble trying to figure out how to use it. Um, but if you use it in smaller spaces, I think because it's such a strong pattern, trying to do like an eight and a half by 10 in that pattern would be a little overwhelming. And I remember we're going to slightly tuck it inside the pocket. So I'm actually going to start by getting the bottom piece tucked in first. And then sort of pulling it back up to its permanent placement. There we go. There we go. glue on one side. Okay, that's it. Okay, we've got... I've got glue everywhere. So now I'm going to come back, since this is in, and I'm going to put that little bit of glue here. The, hold the pocket in place. Oops, that was too much glue. There we go. So that's completely finished. Now we'll work on this last piece, the pockets. I'm gonna turn this around because I can't quite see that edge. Here we go, much better.
glue down this edge on both sides. And I'm not really worried about the glue coming in because this is a very wide pocket. So it um, it's okay if you get a little glue on the inside. I remember I had originally designed this with um, with a flange, um, but it was just too bulky um, to have two flanges plus this. It started making the door look kind of wonky. So I went back and just made these flat pockets that just glue right on top of one another. So this is a deep pocket and it's a shallow pocket. So that's in, so let me turn it over again. And now we're gonna focus on getting the two doors decorated. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at, I think that goes over here. This is what's gonna go on the inside. And then because these aren't quite wide enough, I've got a contrasting strip for both sides. So I think this goes over here and I'm just double checking, yeah, to make sure it's inked. So now I'm trying to decide, do I want that gold on the outside or do I want it on the inside? And I like it both ways, but which do I like better? Hmm. I'm clearing my field of vision, <laughs> so I'm only looking at this now. So I think I like it. I think I like the break between these two patterns, so I'm going to put the gold strip toward the middle. So I'm going to crank it around so this is in front of me. And I'll set these two pieces aside. We'll get this one in. Hopefully that will stay put. And then come back and do the other side. Okay. just about out of glue. So when I turn it right side up, it takes a while to come back down. Sorry about that. You know what, I think I'm gonna go ahead and change my glue out. frustrating to sit and wait for it. Normally, this is not a good practice. I would not just take this and put it on there. I would clean this off first, but for the sake of the video and the flow, I'm going to keep going. Um, but normally when I switch bottles, I completely take apart my tip, which comes in three pieces and soak it, clean it. And I also do the same with the lid because uh, inside the lid, uh, the glue builds up, which keeps it from pushing the pin all the way down. And drying things out so it's good to periodically uh, clean the, the tip and the cap oh what a difference it's flowing so smoothly all right I've got glue flakes everywhere so I'm sweeping things off so it doesn't get stuck under it and it's funny when you go from uh, one bottle to the next over time your glue gets thick or thickens up, and then when you open a new bottle, you, you have to sort of reteach yourself how to apply it because it's it flows so smooth because it's much thinner. So there is still a little glue in here, so I'll put the cap from the other one on here, turn it upside down, and then eventually I'll drain whatever's left in here into my other bottle so that I use absolutely all of it. Okay, so this does have orientation, so I'm just checking to make sure I'm putting this in. Oh, you know what? I wanted this on the inside. <sighs> Let's see if I, yeah, I can get this up without tearing it to pieces. I had completely forgotten. I did that wrong, guys, sorry. This needs to go here, and 
then the, the green piece will go on this side. I got distracted when I switched my glue out. So I need to add a little more glue. And um, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you um, can pull it off very quickly. Because um, once it dries, and you can see it lifted some of my black cardstock, but not a lot. But once it dries, it will either tear up the cardstock or the designer paper. You usually can't pull them apart. Do as I say, not as I do. And I'm getting too heavy handed on the glue. Like I said, it's hard. I have to reteach re myself because it's so, so much thinner. Check your orientation. Okay, so that is in. Now we're gonna turn it around and do essentially the same thing on the um, on the right hand side and this time I'll do it right I'll put the yellow down first <laughs> gonna try but I really need to turn it around so I can see it better <clears throat> and I also I'm gonna go ahead and use a contrast sheet there we go much better much easier am I doing it again yes I almost did it again Now my book is upside down, so that's down, that's up. There we have it. So there's our full spread. Okay, and then the last part is putting these two flaps on. And I almost forgot. We don't know how we're keeping these closed yet. So I'm gonna put the cap on this. I need to think about this for a second. I'm gonna get the um, the other page um, organized. So we don't really know what we're doing to keep these closed yet. So while I think about it, let's go ahead and get the inside of um, page five done so these p papers aren't floating around. And I guess I chose a different strip down here. I didn't realize I had done that. Maybe I ran out of this large print, but I still like it. It's still pretty. Um, I'm gonna get some of this glue off my hands real quick. As I can see, I'm leaving it everywhere. There we go. Okay. All right. So normally I make these exactly the same, but I noticed that the, I did something different. Um, the top is the same and these are slightly different and that's fine. A little variety. I 
sometimes I put this design it and then I step away from it and by the time I come back I'm like I don't know what I was thinking here <laughs> and I'm, I'm designing uh, and building two albums right now so I'm doing this one but I'm also it's a little bit of a bubble there also working on by the sea better make sure that still closes yes it does um, so I've got two design processes floating around in my head. I'm going to go ahead and tack the rest of this pocket down, which wasn't very much to begin with, but now it's all the way in. Oh, I'm terrible with the glue. Way too much glue. Okay, and here's our last piece. I'm going to turn this over so I can see the top. <clears throat> Which means my words need to go this way. Yes, just double checking. in. Need to add a little glue here. And a little over here. Okay, that's done. Okay, now we're on to the flaps inside of the flaps, which are these pieces. So we'll put the yellow in first. didn't go in straight, so I am going to lift it and try again. Better. And this. I'm going to trim this. It doesn't look good to me. It's just slightly out of square. Better. 
that are better. Let's turn the book around and do the other flap. Close that. Maybe a little closer. Here we go. Okay, we're going to lay down the yellow piece first. And you're probably going to get a good amount of my head in this shot, but I can't really avoid it. Double checking orientation. That's the challenge with rotating your book around. You can see the edges better, but you have to keep track of which way is up and down. Ooh, you know what? That's too tight. That is too tight, so I have to let this dry a little bit. I need to trim a sliver off because it's um, it doesn't fit. So let me give that a second, let it dry. And then we need to think about what are we doing to keep the front page closed. So I think I was, I was headed down the path of using some ribbon and tying bows. And I think that is what I'm going to do. Um, See if I can get this dry enough to trim a sliver off. Okay, now I think this is going to work, so I'm going to check it real quick before we go much further. Still need more. That one was way off. I don't know why I was so far off. This will work. This should do it. these okay so everything is done except for the outside pieces so here is the plan 
Um, and I know this looks kind of simple, but I'm totally planning on putting uh, something on the top of these panels during the um, embellishment phase, leaving this side kind of plain and then doing something on the inside. So now I just need to decide, do I want the green on the outside or do I want it on the inside? And I think that's an awful lot of pattern. So I do think I like, it. well, and the other option would be every other one like this, like so. Ooh, I think I like this the best. Okay, I'm gonna dry fit, since I had so much trouble with those last couple pieces, I'm gonna carefully dry fit everything uh, before we put it down right now. And then, um, and then before we put the panels in, I am going to put some ribbon. Yeah, this works. So that one definitely fits. So it'll go on this flap. So now this side. Um, I'm gonna put some ribbon down and we're gonna use ribbon to hold everything together. Okay, so these two work. So I'm gonna set them down and then I'm gonna get my ribbon put in. Now the other, the other option that I was thinking of is, um, and I've done this in, in lots of albums before, is putting it together and then holding these down with um, possibly a magnetized piece of ephemera, which would be the other option, and I would offset them slightly. So it's that, or let's do a quick bow and lay it on and see what it looks like. Or a bow. Or I could do both, actually. Let's just see how we like this cream bow against the, the pattern and the paper. So it would be like so. And I don't know. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Decisions, decisions. I'm going to take a break, think about this, and then when I come back, we will figure out how to keep these two things closed. Okay, I figured out what I'm going to do to keep these closed, and so I'm going to uh, show that to you really quick, and then I'm going to start the construction process. So what I did was I went and selected two pieces of ephemera, large ephemera, um, and I'm going to place it on the solid or the pattern side, like so. Actually, it's gonna be this way. And then I'm going to put both of these onto a card stock and I'm gonna make these cards. So they're gonna open up and have a space for photos as well. And the plan is um, to go ahead and mount these and then turn these into cards. They'll get applied here And one's gonna to be toward the top, and one will be toward the bottom. And then I'm going to have a bow that comes across from this side and ties right here underneath the ephemera um, on the bottom, like so. And so this will be tucked under this mat, and this will come around from the back of this mat, and the bow will finish here. So you'll have this finished bow here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but the bow will be on the top on the reverse page. So um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting these mats uh, laid down on their respective pieces of cardstock. I'm gonna set the book aside for a second. Okay, so here's my two pieces of ephemera. So each one of these will be folded in half, but I'm gonna actually lay down my ephemera first and um, this is an ephemera card, and this is actually from the Cut Apart. And if you're familiar with Graphic 45, you'll know that the Cut Apart is just a tiny bit bigger than the ephemera cards. So I've actually cut these, trimmed these down to specifically fit one for the ephemera and one for the Cut Apart. So now these are going to lay on on top of this green pattern, right? So both of the flaps are... One of the flaps is opening away from the spine. Actually, let me rephrase that. So coming back here. So we've got, since I'm gonna alternate the pattern, both of the um, flaps are gonna open to the right. 
So now if I'm going to put an ephemera card on top, I'm trying to decide, do I want the cards to open away from each other or open in the same direction? I think I want them to open in the opposite direction of the flap that they're on. So in that case, both of these would be mounted this way. I'll score here, fold this in half, and this will open this way, and then the main flap will open the opposite way. And I think that, that works out for the best. So I'll go ahead and get, glue these down. Then I'm gonna have to take a quick break because my scoreboard is not in the same room as me. Um, get these scored and trimmed down, and then um, the last piece will be uh, placement of the ribbon and getting those mats in place. So we're almost done with these two pages. And that's the middle of the book. And everything goes faster after this because you've already made one. Um, okay. okay, perfect. Let's get this one in. And I'll probably come back and put something inside these two cards but I'll do that as part of the embellishment phase so we can get on with the rest of the pages. And you can get most of your book made. And your paper's laid down. Okay, that's in. All right, so like I said, I need to step out. I'm gonna score these, fold them in half, and if I've got any excess, I'll trim it down so it's just a nice, perfect, uh, card for these two pieces of ephemera and then we'll be ready to lay figure out where to lay um, the ribbon down so that it ties on the uh, at the appropriate space on both sides so give me a minute I'll be right back okay I got my um, I got both my cards scored and folded so now you can see how they work and here's the other one and I've chose this orientation because I like that the birds are sort of looking toward each other, so toward the center of the book. So that's the that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place this ephemera card on this mat um, before I go any further. And then once that's done, I can figure out where the ribbon is going to fall and get these two mats down and we'll be finished with this page. Okay, so remember I'm going to do one toward the top. I'm out of frame, sorry. One toward the top, one toward the bottom, so I can alternate the ribbons. So I'm just trying to decide which one do I want up and which one do I want down. And I think I'm gonna do it that way. So I'll put the, the um, I wanna call it a pelican, <laughs> but that's not what it is, flamingo, <laughs> toward the top, and then I'll do the parrot toward the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna double check and make sure this mat goes with this flap. Occasionally, they're not perfectly the same and they fit better one way than one way other than one way better than the other. Wow, I'm tongue tied today. So I'm going to check that out before I glue down my ephemera because then I can't swap them out. And that looks really good. So this is going to work. So what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for an equal border around these three sides because I know it's going to be up from the bottom. That's where the bow is going to be. But I'd like these this mat to look pretty square or even. I'm struggling a little bit because I've got a shadow in here. It's making the bottom look crooked. So I'm going to adjust my light a little. Cool to see if I'm getting a, if I'm drifting up or down. That's pretty darn straight. So I'm going to push it into place. All right. Okay. Pretty straight. Okay, so that's in. So now this is going to go on here. Let's do this side. Things, so I've got a little workspace here. OK, 
Okay, get some brew on it. Another reason you'd want to dry fit these mats before you add the ephemera is if they don't fit right and you need to trim them, you want to do it before you add your ephemera. Um, it'll just make it easier to handle in the trimmer. Okay. Perfect. We're in. Okay. So the ribbon that I'm using is this cream colored ribbon, which if you buy the bundle from us, you get as uh, part of the bundle, um, along with a couple of other um, uh, ribbons as well. This is actually uh, one of the ribbons and I'm planning on actually using this to tie the, I think I'm gonna use it to tie the whole thing uh, together, but if not, um, if I don't use it to tie it together, I'll probably use it on the cover somewhere. So what I've done is I've taken that cream ribbon and it's one yard and I just cut it in half so that I'm using half on one side and half on the other. And I probably won't need to use all half. I might even trim it some more. And somehow I've lost one of my pieces of ribbon. <laughs> Here it is, it's on the floor. Okay, there we go. So, the plan. The plan is to tuck behind this panel the ribbon it's gonna come across and tie right here. And so the second half is gonna come out from under this mat, like so. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I cut it in half once, I'm gonna cut it in half again, or actually not in half. I want most, no, it, it, yeah, in half, in half. Use good scissors so it doesn't fray. Okay, so now I just need to figure out what my placement is underneath this mat. And then I'm gonna tape it down on both sides and then glue my panels on top of it and it should stay in place. I was just stalling because I didn't know what I did with my tape. <laughs> All right, so. Now I just need to figure out how far down I want to go. And it looks like, I, I just want it in the middle of this right here. And I'm, I'm just eyeballing everything. I think that's about right. So that's about where I want it. And of course, I'm in here without a pencil, which is, not a very smart thing to do, but I do have my compass here, so I'm just gonna use that to put a little tick mark. So I can kind of double check it. And then I'll just use the ribbon as a straight line across to the other side. No, I won't because it's not straight. <laughs> Where's my, here it is, let's see. Where's my ruler? too much glare. Sorry for the change in light, but I can't see. Too much glare. Drifting down. Take right on. And I'm, I'm putting a tick mark, but I'm Staying clear of what will wind up being um, exposed once I put the mat down. Did I use the right answer? Did that work? I don't see it. Sorry for all the shuffling, but I gotta move that closer to me. I can't see it. My light's not good enough. It's a very cloudy day here, so my natural light, which I normally rely on, isn't very good today. So I'm going with studio light, which is never my preference. I 
think I pressed hard enough to get a pencil mark earlier. see it now and that's all I really need to um, put down the tape to hold the ribbon which I again have misplaced here's the ribbon and here's the tape okay good grief goodness so I'm going to center the I gotta look again better safe than sorry so it's going to go that way. Yeah, okay. I'm going to center my tape over the line. I wasn't sure if I was trying to put it at the top or the bottom. And it doesn't have to go the full distance. It's just enough to, t to hold down the ribbon until we get our mats glued down. That's all we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, so I'm going to take tape this down. I'm going to lay my mat back over it and test it one more time because if it's not what I want, I still have some time to do a correction. Okay. And I just want to pull the ribbon over to see, is it falling where I think it should? Is it too high or too low? And I think it's just right. So I'm good. I'm happy with that. Now I'm double checking to see if there's a nope, if there's a certain side to the ribbon, and there's not. Okay, so now that we have these two pieces of ribbon in place, we can um, get our mats in. So this is what's going to happen. It's going to come across and tie right here. We'll have a nice little bow right on top of this piece of ephemera. So. I think I want to actually, I'm, I'm moving my ribbon over so I have a little more ribbon this way. Okay, all right, that's good. So I'm ready to glue this in. Just check and make sure my ribbon's in straight. And it is, and hopefully my glue didn't dry on me while I was fussing around with all of that. Okay, yay, we're, we're making some progress. This, I always love the center, and that's almost always what I design first. Um, and then I always come back and add something else like this ephemera, and then I like it even more. Okay, so I'm checking my orientation, make sure my card is going the right way. And it is, it's up and down the way it should be. glue here but that's it oh you know what I just realized ha <laughs> that wasn't very smart there's nothing holding this flap down so we'll have to come back and put a magnet there <laughs> How about that I think originally I was thinking about um, the bow coming across uh, both pieces but we'll have to put something here to keep it closed and we'll go ahead and do that now so I don't forget which means, as you know, we're gonna have to, actually I only have to do one because there happens to be a magnet on the other side that's attracting it. Um, and that's just, it just worked out that way. It might not for you. I'm, trying to, I'm stalling because I'm looking for my fat tape, which I guess I don't have in here. Yes, I do. Here it is. Um, Oh, at any rate, what this means um, is we're going to have to line. <laughs> we're going to have to line the um, this card. So 
Um, if you don't want to line your card, if you want to just keep it black for photos, then you just need to move your ribbon down so the ribbon closes over um, this piece of ephemera as well as the two flaps. So, okay, now that's done. So I'm ready to put this piece in. And I'm going to double check and make sure it fits. And if it doesn't, trim it down before we get some glue on it. Then I'm going to... I'm going to get a contrast sheet because I'm having trouble seeing all the edges. Okay, I've got a nice large contrast sheet to lay down. So it makes it so much easier. It's good to have those handy. And that looks spot on, so I'm very pleased with that. So I'm gonna get some glue on it and get it down. And then we'll tie our bow and you'll see what it looks like. And then um, we'll have to come back and line those, line that, uh, the card here. Or at least the one side that has the magnet has to get lined. done. So we have one in now. So let's go ahead and tie it and see what it looks like. And I'm left-handed, so my bows are always upside down. <laughs> when I do a finished project, what I typically do is turn my, bo my book upside down before I tie the bow so, it, so the tails go off in the right direction. But... Um, it looks pretty good. I like it. I like it. So um, I may come back and trim a little bit off the ends. Uh, I haven't decided, but I'm not going to fuss with that right now. In fact, I don't even have, yeah, I, do. I was going to say I don't even have my ribbon scissors, but I do. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. And now that I know where this ribbon is, I'm going to probably, I'm going to go ahead and um, just measure down since I don't have to do a visual on this side because I know what it I know what it should look like. So on this side, we're gonna go like so. So this will be on this side. So this is where I need to check and see. Two and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tape down. I don't think I need to write, uh, put a mark, pencil mark. Come to the outside and there we go. So I'll do the same thing on this side. And it's just enough to hold your ribbon in place while you, um, you know, prepare your mats. You don't, the, um, the tape itself isn't what's gonna hold the ribbon, it's the glue and the mat, so just enough to hold it in place is all you need. Oops, that's a little high. I think I've got those high enough. Yeah, these need to move up a little bit. Well, I didn't think I needed to use a pencil, but I think it's too hard to hold this in place, so I am going to put a little tick mark. Um, Good. 
Okay, so now you're going to need your ribbon. Cut your ribbon in half again. And I love these scissors. These are Fiskars, and they just are awesome for cutting ribbon. I would recommend getting some if you don't have them, but then only use them for ribbon. <laughs> Once you cut paper with something, it's that's all you can cut with it. So I have to think for a second. This goes this way. Oh, actually, this tape needs to be on the outside. That's why I'm like, wait, something's not right. <laughs> okay. And now this piece of tape, even though I put it here, it really ought to be over here. On the far side of the other panel. So, what did I do with my roll of tape? Okay, now we're ready to put our panels in. I'm going to rotate this around so I can see it a little better, and I'm going to go ahead and use my contrast sheet too. Okay, that looks good. Same thing. That is beautiful. I'm really pleased with this. Okay, this will tie and hold these two doors shut. And then um, we're going to pop a magnet in here. Now, so on this side, I only used one magnet. It's because there happened to be a magnet on the other side of the page, under here, that's, it's, um, marrying up to we may not have that luck on this side have that same fortune and it doesn't feel like it so we're going to need two magnets and before i lay a mat down on this side i may come back and add another magnet anyways because that additional layer of paper may be just enough to push it over the edge where it won't um, stay closed anymore Good grief. <laughs> And again, I like to use this wide tape over the magnets to soften the edges once the um, designer paper goes in. That 
is, and you can see my bow is kind of wonky, and that's my left-handedness coming out. Um, but, boy, it really is wonky, isn't it? <laughs> Let me straighten that out a little. That was pretty embarrassing. Tie this shut, and then we are done with pages four and five. And I'm really happy with the way they turned out. I hope you guys are too. Um, there we go. That's much better. Still not beautiful. But um, there it is. Um, I'm really liking the way these turned out. So um, the bow will hold these closed. Um, and it, it should be a little bit tighter. But like, I'm having trouble tying this bow. So open, open. We've got lots of space for um, uh, photo mats inside in these large pockets. And then we've got room for two more photos here. And then, of course, we've got the same thing on this side. Gorgeous. Okay, so that is it for today. Um, I will come back uh, later and do some additional. Um, the So we're on to page six, seven, and eight. And then we'll be done with all the interior and we'll be focused on the outside of the book. So at least uh, two more videos. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, and that's all for today. And um, be sure to click on the links below. The cut list is under the more instructions, and um, there's also a material list for this project. So be sure to come take a visit uh, at our shop and give us a give us a shot if you're going to buy the paper. Thank you for tuning in.